Before we start VLSMing again, we need to decide what the next network number is going to be or what the next subnet number is going to be because we were given 210.49.29.0, but obviously that can't be our subnet number for all of our subnets. That just would not work. So what would work? All you need to do is add 1 to the broadcast address that you came up with here because that way you're not wasting any addresses. You're going to the very next slice and saying, okay, I am picking up where the last one left off and that's going to be 210 49 29 32 and what I do is just write it out like this write it out in binary and remember to update your network your network number because now it's 210 49 29 32 so let's see our requirement for network B is to have at least 10 valid host addresses what's the lowest number of host bits I can get away with and meet that requirement. 2, 4, 8, 16, 4 bits. Because that will give me 16 addresses. Two of them I can't use on host, so that's going to leave me 14 valid host addresses. You could use your discretion in the real world there and say, well, you know, do I want it to be that restrictive? You know, do I want to back off one? But for our example here, we're going to say that's perfectly fine with us and say at least 10 valid host addresses because that's certainly what an exam question would say. It's like, okay, you know, we just want 10 valid hosts. So if we use need four host bits, obviously, we got a lot of ones there. There we go. That's our subnet mask slash 28. So we know that our subnet for network B it's going to be 210 49 29 32 slash 28. We also know the subnet address itself will be 210 49 29 32. What's the broadcast address for the subnet? See, you thought you were never going to use that again, didn't you? <laughs> you thought you'd just use it on the exam. This is something, this is real world. This is as real world as it gets. Well, our broadcast address is that our four host bits are going to be set to one and what you must keep in mind is that you're looking at the entire octet when you fill in the broadcast address and by the way when you're doing this and as you're doing it whether it's production network or whether you're in a lab please write it down you know just make a little baby excel spreadsheet uh, make a little baby notepad i don't care but write this stuff down somewhere so if those host bits are all one and remember that 32 bit is set now. That's going to be 210, 49, 29, what? 8421 are set. That's 15. That's going to be 47. And there's your broadcast address for that subnet. Now, the reason I'm being so persnickety there, whatever you want to call it, Every once in a while, especially when people are just starting, they concentrate only on the host bits when they're coming up with that value. And they'll look at that and say, okay, my broadcast address is uh, 15. Because they're not looking at the fact that there's another bit already set in the network number. So just a quick warning here. If you come up with a broadcast address that is backwards from the subnet address, you need to look at it again. And if you're looking at a subnet address of 210.49.29.32, it is impossible for the all ones address uh, to be 210.49.29.15. It's got to be something higher than what you're seeing in the subnet address. And it's 47. So all of our valid hosts are in the middle. 33 through 210, 49, 29, 46. Everything in the middle, and that's going to give us at least our 10 valid hosts. One other thing I want to mention here. And I've done this myself every once in a while. It's really easy to write those addresses like this when you're writing the range valid host. And there's nothing wrong with leaving the first three octets out there, but it's kind of a, a rugged habit. I don't even want to say it's a bad habit, but I think it's a habit that can come back and nail you because sometimes, you know, your range valid host is going to have a different third octet. And if you get in the habit of just writing the fourth octet as the valid host, you know, one day you might just do that and you leave an important number out. So what I do like to do is write out the valid host range. I'll write the entire address for the first range, then do a dash in the entire address for the second range. Just a couple of dad lectures in there for you. Just want to keep that information straight because we're working hard on this. 
and we want to keep it straight. So what is our next network number that we're working with? It's one up from the broadcast address, and that is going to be 210-49-29-48. And we will pick up right there on the next video.